unlike more approachable tools like Blender, Maya, Max, or Cinema 4D. I think Houdini deliberately forgoes beginner friendliness in exchange for deeper procedural control, a node-based workflow, and a code-driven flexibility. And this is not a new thing. This has been the case for decades at this point. This design philosophy has made Houdini both revered and intimidating, a tool hailed for its unparalleled power by technical artists and VFX studios. In this video, we will see why side effects the developers of Houdini don't want it to be simple or easy to learn, which makes one think that they don't want the average Joe to use it in the first place. In reality, this is not their intention, but it has to be this way, and I will tell you why. I think that Houdini exposes what other software hide, so instead of simplifying or blackboxing complex processes, Houdini encourages users to look under the hood. As a side effects veteran described it, in Houdini, one can see what is happening inside the tools, or the nodes with a simple clicks, going as deep as needed. In fact, deeper than any other 3D software. Other 3D packages tend to shield users from the complexity for the sake of convenience, but Houdini embraces that complexity. It expects the artist to handle it, and he continues. Other 3D packages try to help you by hiding the information, but Houdini gives you power and control even if at first glance it is very strange. One of Houdini's hallmark strengths is its integration of scripting and coding in creative workflows. Houdini's node networks can be augmented with VEX, Houdini's vector expression language, and Python scripting to fine-tune behaviors or generate entirely new ones. This makes Houdini extremely customizable at a low level. For example, during the making of Disney's Moana, a fax artist wrote VAX code inside Houdini's simulation context to control how water particles form sheets and drips, exposing only a few high-level knobs for animators that they can adjust. I believe that this code-driven approach gives it unparalleled power, so anything that can be mathematically described can be turned into an effect. The trade-off, however, is that using Houdini effectively often is more like learning a mid-level programming language instead of learning a 3D software. Because of this design, Houdini packs virtually every tool that a high-end production might need, from fluid empire simulations to procedural modeling and compositing, all interoperable in one unified environment. You see, studios rarely need to buy add-ons or plugins for Houdini, whereas competing software often rely on add-ons or plugins for specialized effects. As an experienced artist observed, with Houdini, you have much more control over everything and rarely hit a spot where there are no workarounds, whether it be fluids, particles, smoke, etc. They are all out of the box. This pipeline in a box completeness is a direct result of side effects focused on technical depth. I believe that people who use Houdini know that it is unapologetically challenging for beginners. The software doesn't handhold the user with one-click presets or oversimplified interfaces even though the other popular 3D software don't do that exactly, but Houdini takes it to another level. Houdini takes longer to be productive than almost any other 3D application, as one forum user explains bluntly, because not much is done behind the scene for you. You see, in Houdini, the user is expected to understand the under-the-hood concepts, whether it is geometry attributes, factor math, or simulation solvers, that other 3D software might conceal. Simple tasks can require navigating the node graph or writing expressions, whereas in Maya or Cinema 4D, a similar result might be achieved with a ready-made modifier or an add-on. This is a feature not a bug of Houdini's design. As side effects on training hat, Michael Gordfarb responded for calls for more newbie-friendly black box tools. He said that Houdini's doesn't have these is exactly why people use Houdini. In practical terms, Houdini's learning curve is steep so new users often report being overwhelmed by its interface and concepts. Houdini has been easily the most difficult to use application or 3D software I have ever encountered. Every step is a hunt for a mystery to solve, wrote one 3D veteran after weeks of learning the software. And this is someone who has been in the industry using other 3D software, let alone someone new to 3D. A big reason is that Houdini assumes that the artists know exactly what they are doing because they provide very few safety nets. 
change a parameter or node, and you might unintentionally break the entire chain of effects with no warning. The software will not stop you from making mistakes because it was built for experts who want the total freedom. Furthermore, Houdini historically provided fewer pre-made templates compared to its peers. While modern Houdini has added shelf tools, which are one-click setups for things like explosions or pyro effects, these are just still networks of nodes under the hood, often complex and intuitive to the untrained eye. Goldfarb explained that in studio environments. If artists want simplified controls, the solution is not to dumb down Houdini's base design, but to have senior TDs package Houdini networks into custom digital assets. Essentially, Houdini made plugins for less technical animators to use. In other words, Houdini expects studios to create their own tools and their own user-friendly layers if needed, rather than compromising the software's depth at the source. All of this means that beginners face a high barrier to entry. Many artists coming from Maya, Max, Blender, or Cinema 4D find themselves having to unlearn some habits, because Houdini is different, not harder. Goldfarb noted, explaining that newcomers who aren't comparing it to other apps actually fare better. But for those used to more guided software, Houdini's blank node graph and sparse initial UI can feel alien. Some industry blogs candidly state that Houdini's power and flexibility come with a learning curve, and its procedural node-based thinking can be initially challenging for artists accustomed to traditional tools, which is true to a certain extent. Similarly, when compared to Blender, Blender's user-friendly interface and versatile tools appeal to generalists whereas Houdini's procedural strengths and advanced VFX capabilities require more technical acumen. In short, Houdini deliberately prioritizes capability over accessibility, reflecting side effects focus on high-end use case, and I think everyone knows this at this point. Also, I like this quote from this Houdini user, who said it on the side effects forums, anything this deep won't be easy. And I can't agree more, because freedom and depth bring complexity with it. Given its complexity, Houdini tends to attract a specific subset of CG professionals, like VFX artists and technical directors, who are Houdini's strongest advocates. These are people who need to create the hardest, most customizable effects. Think of super realistic effects, like ocean waves, magical disintegration effects, city destructions, and so on often under tight production deadlines for very big productions. For them, Houdini's procedural approach is a game-changer. Visual effects artists gravitate to Houdini's because its procedural workflow is ideal for creating sophisticated particle and dynamic simulations. Because Houdini lets you build an effect as a reusable system, so artists can automate reactions to things happening in a shot, giving more creative control and more rapid turnaround in a fast-paced pipeline. In essence, Houdini is built to handle massive complexity with consistency, which is a must for blockbuster VFX work. Major VFX and animation studios therefore keep Houdini in their toolkit. In fact, Houdini expertise is highly valued and rare. You see, historically, fewer artists mastered Houdini, and it was even priced prohibitively in the past, so those who did became hot commodities. As one forum member observed, the learning curve is so steep that few artists achieved a useful level, so a Houdini TD can demand the big big box for their services in studios. It is true that Houdini specialists are in high demand in film, TV, and game productions precisely because they can do what others sometimes can't do with their 3D software, at least not in a timely manner or with the same flexibility. Studios like Para Digital. ILM, Pixar, in addition to others have relied on Houdini for years to deliver cutting-edge effects. And I think to a certain extent, this difference in target audience is even reflected in their marketing and community culture. Blender's community celebrates accessibility with tutorials for every level, in addition to plug-and-play add-on, a sense that everyone can jump in. On the other hand, in Houdini's community, while everyone is supportive, and sharing intricate setups, discussing simulations in terms of solvers and scripting, and encouraging newcomers to push through the foundational knowledge. It is still hard to a certain extent compared to a software such as Blender in the Blender community. One Houdini instructor 
even argues that learning Houdini first ultimately gives a better grounding in CGI fundamentals, precisely because it forces you to understand them instead of offering shortcuts. In any case, Houdini has found its niche among those who need its power, and this sentiment kind of encapsulates why, despite its difficulty, Houdini earns such loyalty from longtime users, because once you know how to use it, the efficiency and capability can be a superpower. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.